A physical change is something you change and it only changes the physical properties like length, width, color, mass, volume. Uh, it does not change the identity. That's the big thing. If it stays the same substance, it's a physical change. Um, why is melting an ice cube reversible, Abby? Hmm? All right, you can just freeze it again. Uh, give an example of an irreversible physical change. Yes, sir. Uh, cutting a tree down. Cutting a tree down. It's still wood. Okay, you haven't changed the identity of the substance, but you can't put it back. It's it's now a dead tree. Someone said burning. Burning is a chemical change. It is irreversible. Well. You could reverse it with a lot of chemical changes. I mean, you could take the ashes from burning the tree and then you could put those in the soil and then they would break down into nutrients and be absorbed by a new tree who would then use those nutrients to grow. But that's a lot of chemical reactions. So it's basically irreversible. But burning is chemical. Uh, what is the mixture? Okay, two or more substances. Is it physical or chemical? It's a physical combination. I would add that. Maybe just add the word physical in. Um, as opposed to chemically combined. If they're chemically combined, then that's a chemical change. That's a chemical reaction. Uh, what is the difference between homogeneous and heterogeneous? Go ahead. Uh, All right. So a homogeneous looks the same throughout. It's consistent. Um, heterogeneous, you can see the different parts. Okay. Um, Make a table to compare, contrast, um, solutions, colloids, and suspensions. So you should have something. Solutions, you should have, they're the smallest particle size. They do not scatter light, and they do not separate or settle. Colloids have, their particles are in the middle. They do not separate or settle, but they do scatter light. They're big enough for light to actually bounce off of them. And suspensions, the particles are so big that they separate or settle out, um, and they scatter light. If you have iron filings attracted by a magnet, this is a physical property of iron but not of the most other materials, including sand. How could you use the difference in physical properties to separate a mixture of iron filings and sand? Use a magnet. Use a magnet. That's not a hard question. Okay. Now a hard question would be, well, harder, um, how would you separate salt and sand? Well, um, you, could, uh, you could use a balloon. How would you use a balloon? Um, the, what's it called? Static? Yeah, the static. Mm -hmm. yeah, the Interesting. Okay, that was not what I had in my head, but it might work. I don't know. Um, the salt would probably be lighter than the sand, so it, it might work. When you go to the ocean, is the, the ocean water, is it salt water or is it sand water? Okay. So you could mix the sand and the salt with water. The water or the salt would dissolve, 
the sand would not. Pour everything through a filter that gets the sand out. Mm. Then you let the water evaporate. That leaves the salt behind. Evaporation, filtration um, are the two basics of uh, separating things. Some things you can use a magnet. I mean, even when you pour your pasta through a colander to separate the water from the noodles, that's you're filtering it. It's just a filter with very big holes. Um, we already said what a mixture is. Homogeneous, um, just it looks the same throughout. Are all solutions homogeneous mixtures? Yeah. Yes. Uh, can homogeneous mixtures be separated into their components? Yes. Okay. Um, you've got salt water. Evaporate the water, the salt's left behind. Um, you got a cup of coffee. If you leave it long enough, the water evaporates, the coffee's left behind. Um, define a heterogeneous mixture. We, are, we already did that. Why is vegetable soup heterogeneous? Not the same throughout. Not the same throughout. You can tell the difference between a carrot and a piece of celery versus the soup itself, the liquid part of the soup. Now, if you took your vegetable soup and put it in a blender and made a vegetable soup smoothie, it probably would be disgusting, but it would be closer to um, homogeneous or homogeneous because it would be harder to tell the difference because it's all blended together. Um, how many phases are in a heterogeneous mixture? At least two. Why two? Because there has to be like yeah. two different things to separate. Yeah, we'll go that was a guess. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Anybody have an answer for the book? Hmm? We don't need it. I, uh, I, uh, I, uh, I, uh, I, I, why do you keep going to Google Docs? Just go to see K12. What lesson was that? 2.9? Yes. A phase is any part of a sample that has a uniform composition and properties. By definition, a pure substance or homogeneous mixture consists of a single phase. A heterogeneous mixture consists of two or more phases. I said at least two. Yeah, but you also admitted to guessing. Yeah. How about if it it's an educated it? guess, though. I explained why. In the words of, what's why his name, Hobby Lane? <laughs> but I, it was an educated guess. I made it off. Of Apparently it was not an educated guess because you didn't read it. I didn't read it, but it was well, you can use context for the trigger. Yeah. Why don't I hear it? Yeah, a a solution is a mixture of two or more substances in the same phase. This is formed when a solute dissolves in a solvent. A solution can also be formed when two or more miscible liquids 
elements are mixed together. When ethanol and water are mixed together, a solution is formed. Now, how would we separate the solutions? To separate dissolved salt from water, we would simply evaporate as much water as possible, leaving behind white salt crystals. The separation technique is known as evaporation. To separate ethanol from water, we must take into account the fact that these substances have very different boiling points. Water boils at 100 degrees Celsius, whereas ethanol boils at 78 degrees Celsius. This mixture can be separated by simple distillation. The lower boiling point of water, in our case, ethanol, will evaporate first. The ethanol vapor condenses as it passes through the condenser, and the distilled ethanol can then be collected in the receiving flask. The above mixtures are homogeneous mixtures. This means that the components of the mixture are in the same phase, or the composition of the mixture is uniform throughout. Now, we will look at separating heterogeneous mixtures, where the components in the mixture are not in the same phase, or the composition of the mixture is uneven. If we have a mixture of sulfur and iron filings, we can easily separate out this mixture with a magnet. The magnet will remove all of the iron filings, leaving behind the yellow sulfur powder. We know that salt is completely soluble in water, but sand is not. How would you separate a mixture of salt and sand easily, keeping in mind the solubility of salt and water? Pause, think, and continue when you have an answer. The salt and sand mixture can be added to water. Salt will dissolve, but sand cannot. The resulting heterogeneous mixture can be filtered through a funnel lined with filter paper and wash the water to remove as much salt as possible. The substance that remains on the filter paper is All right, I'll see you tomorrow. Don't lose the slip of paper I gave you. That's your notes for tomorrow. So if you lose it, you'll have to write on my hand.